Hello, welcome to the GEMS video on the concerns and questions of the use of GLP-1 arrays. Glucagon like peptide 1 receptor agonists are a group of injectable therapies for diabetes and some other associated illnesses like obesity. There are a couple of questions, commonly asked questions from patients. Will drugs like Victosa produce cancer? Will I develop cancer of the pancreas? Will I develop cancer of the thyroid? Will I develop vomiting and diarrhea, which can be so severe? Will I develop a weight loss, which will ultimately lead on to an emaciated, tired appearance? This is a video which will have answer, scientific answers to all these questions and concerns. GLP-1 is a natural product which is secreted from the L cells of the small intestine in response to the ingestion of carbohydrate, which can be deficient in obesity and in type 2 diabetes. As discussed in some of our previous GEMS videos available in YouTube, these groups of drugs are those which modulate the secretion of insulin and can suppress the secretion of glucagon from the pancreatic alpha cells in response to fluctuating levels of glucose. And now back to the concerns. The first one, vomiting and abdominal discomfort. Yes, it is true. These group of injectable therapies such as Victosa during the initial few weeks can result in nausea and sometimes vomiting, abdominal pain and rarely diarrhea. These are not serious side effects. Usually they subside in a couple of days to weeks and then stabilizes. And that's the reason why these drugs are initially started in small doses and gradually uptitrated in response to the patient's satisfaction levels, in response to the blood glucose levels. For example, in the rare instance of a patient developing vomiting, we will reduce the dose rather than discontinuing the therapy. These injections can be administered irrespective of the meal timings. In case the nausea or vomiting is very severe, you may consult your doctor. He or she may either reduce the dose or they can ask you to discontinue the drug for a while and then again you can resume it. Now the question of cancer risk with Victosa like drugs. Diabetes per se as a disease puts the patient at a higher risk of cancer two to three folds higher than the general population. And if you consider the pancreatic cancer risk, as seen here, approximately 85% of patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer will either have an impaired fasting glucose or they have an established diabetes. 
and those patients with diabetes with chronic pancreatitis or pancreatic stones will have a much higher chances of developing pancreatic cancer and from the conclusions of a workshop in 2013 approximately there is 82% increased risk of pancreatic cancer in those subjects with type 2 diabetes and this cancer is totally independent of therapies better you receive therapy and normalize your blood sugars greater will be your chances to avoid cancer so you need not fear any drug producing cancer it is the uncontrolled diabetes probably or the uncontrolled obesity which is directly responsible for cancer what about medullary carcinoma of thyroid there is a very specific rare cancer in human beings there are various types of cancer in the thyroid and it was once thought that these drugs can have a side effect of medullary cancer of the thyroid but these cancers are observed only in rodents never in animals and there are solid reasons for the same if you look at this slide in rodents the density of c cells in the thyroid is 45 times higher than in humans and rodents have the glp1 receptors on the surface of c cells which are up to 1000 to 10000 in contrast to humans having 0 to 100 per cc let us have a look into the species specific density of the c cells in the thyroid in mouse the density of the c cells in the thyroid are 22 times higher when compared to human beings and when there is ingestion of victosa like drugs in rodents there is activation of cyclic amp and there is calcitonin release from the c cells whereas upon glp1 receptor activation there is no calcitonin which is released from the human c cells of the thyroid this clearly explains the fact that thyroid cancers cannot result from victosa like therapies in human beings whenever a new therapy is introduced based on clinical trials conducted globally usually there is a question how will the response be in the asian indian population as of course there had been extensive clinical trials on these drugs from india china and neighboring countries we have also published real life clinical experience using victosa in patients this is a study where we have demonstrated the use of liraglutide in newly diagnosed subjects with type 2 diabetes apart from normalization of glycemic parameters normalization of cardiovascular risk parameters we even went to the extent of postulating a remission of diabetes with the yearly use of victosa where there is an elimination of glucotoxicity and a probable rejuvenation of pancreatic beta cell population since at the time of diagnosis of diabetes itself approximately there is a 50 to 80% decline in the beta cell mass 
Apart from this original study, we have also published another one where we demonstrated the use of liraglutide in 195 subjects with type 2 diabetes and majority of them in combination with other therapies including various insulin regimens demonstrating reduction in the glucose reduction in HPA1C with the least glucose variability and in addition to that least or almost complete elimination of hypoglycemia since hypoglycemia is a major barrier to the treatment of diabetes in all these studies we have demonstrated body weight reduction which is robust with the use of liraglutide and in the initial study it was up to the tune of 8 kilograms offering a multitude of benefits in the treatment of type 2 diabetes with assured safety. In India, we are using 1.2 and 1.8 milligrams of liraglutide in the treatment of diabetes and diabetes with obesity. In the United States, liraglutide 3 milligrams is now approved under the name Sank Center. Liraglutide and associated GLP-1 RA therapies are absolutely safe. The safety and efficacy of these molecules have led on to more research and emergence of many new drugs in the same class. Lexisenatide, Dulaglutide, Semaglutide, etc. etc. It is up to the physician and to the patient to have cost effective choices in the treatment of diabetes, which can reduce glucose variability, eliminate the chances of hypoglycemia, and effectively reduce body weight. Thank you so much for listening, for viewing. Until next time, bye-bye from JDC Diabetes Jumps team in Kerala.